like six years. It's, it's a fair time. Uh, when I interviewed Jamie, uh, obviously Jamie, well, not obviously, but Jamie was, it was a mature student and mature students, which we, we have quite a lot of mature students, bring a certain, I think, certain flavor to the course, a certain focus. Uh, and Jamie, I think I'd have to say Jamie's probably brought the biggest focus to the course of all time. By the way, some of his work is 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 popping up there. I'm just going to um, pop onto the uh, the client your your company's website. This is the company. This is the Flavor People website. So uh, Jamie, uh, Jamie had a real focus. He, you know, he said to me, "I need to, I need to, I need to get the qualification. I need to do a great job, and uh, I need to get a job after it." End of. And you know, I think, I think as tutors, we feel, uh, we feel quite quite connected with mature students uh, in that they you know they often have to keep a roof over their head and they struggle with uh, you know some of the day-to-day -day, um, trappings of life and Jamie was incredibly focused on the fact that he needed to do the course get what he needed off the course to get him into a job super quick uh, and he did that uh, Jamie, I, I described Jamie as uh, somebody, he, he never went fishing for a job, he went hunting for a job. So Jamie sort of uh, presented himself, I suppose, as, you know, very ethical, uh, tenacious, um, dedicated and driven. And, and that's how I describe Jamie. So it's no surprise that he's done well, uh, but it also shows what can be achieved when one puts one's mind to it. So, uh, Jamie, I, I'm going to sort of go over to you now. Um, if we could sort of start with um, maybe a, a little bit of, about your background, what you were doing before you study, and then um, the studying, um, yeah. maybe initially, and then you know we could we could go on to interviews and maybe look at your website. Is that okay? Yeah, of course it is. So I'm going to stop sharing, which will bring Jamie to the front. Okay, Jamie. Cool. There we go. So, um, hi, I'm Jamie, for the people that don't know me. Um, so kind of before the course, I'd, um, I'd, I'd done a bit, bit of everything from bricklaying through to retail work. I'd done a bit of traveling to the Alps and all the rest of it. But when, when I applied for the course, I was working in retail, I was working in a snowboard shop in the Chill Factor, um, which I love. But obviously, it's retail is one of them jobs that you it's got a cap on how much money you're going to earn and where your career is going to take you. So I knew that I wanted to get into design or marketing. Um, at some point I'd had a clothing company where I'd learned a little bit about graphic design and all the rest of it. And I remember turning up for my first interview with, I think both Alex's were on the interview with me on my first day. And I hadn't had a clue what a portfolio was or anything like that. And I just emptied a bag full of, t-shirts that I'd put prints on and beanies that I'd sewn patches on and I made this little trifold leaflet with a brick wall effect that was dead dated and all the rest of it and I was like there you go there's, there's my portfolio um I kind of want to do this and I still remember to this day um I can't remember which Alex asked me but he was like oh I think because you haven't had that much experience in education that the, um, the introductory course might be best for you and in my head, I was like, nah, that's, that's not good enough for me. Like, it's either I get on this course and it's done in three years or I find a different, a different channel or a different path. I, was, I knew it's what I wanted to do. And, um, and I, think, I, don't, I don't know if I said that out loud, but in my head, I did. And um, well, whatever happened, I got, I got onto the course and I was, um, I was over the moon by it. Um, as Alex K just said, I'm... I knew what I needed from the course and nothing, nothing was going to really stop me from getting that. Um, Can I ask you, Jamie, did you, um, did, did you have a part-time job? How, yes. did you, how did you keep that, those two things going? Yeah, so the benefit of getting a job in retail. Um, so I, for the first two years, I carried on working in, in the snowboard shop, um, weekends and um, the one day that I wasn't in uni. Um, and just juggled that so not all my uni work was done either in the evenings or in the half a day that we had or um, yeah 
was kind of juggled yeah, the yeah. two really because I still I still I uh, had my apartment that I needed to needed to keep. I had my car that I needed to drive, and so obviously earning money. And then I had gratefully I had the uh, maintenance grant, which made it a a little was bit. It, was it hard juggling those two things, the course yeah. and? Of course it is, but I get it. All it comes back to whether how much you how much you really want it, and um, as as you guys know, I I was I was keen to make it work. Um, I don't come from a wealthy background, so there's no no support from the parents or any of that lot. So you just do what you do to make it work and get what you need out of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions for Jamie at this point about um, you know study and working um, um, that that kind of stuff? No one's asking anything yet, Alex. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, uh, what were the sort of key points up during the course then that um, you think put you in a position to get what you wanted then? So I, 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 know, I know the moment and it's thanks to um, Alex J. Um, this is this apart from everything else I learned in that year but we did a brief for um, a high um, working on the JV stuff um, and this is apart from everything else that I learned along the way, like all the typeset and everything, which is still something that I pride myself on today. But I remember I did this beautiful logo that I was so proud of and all the rest of it. And the feedback I got from Ahoy was a bit brutal. Well, not brutal, it's honest. Um, and I was like, I almost swore, but I won't swear. Um, I was like, crap. I was like, well, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I remember sitting down with Alex Jackson and she was like, She's like, there's nothing out. You need to, you need the brand inside of the logo. The logo's amazing, but what makes that a brand? What elements can you put to that logo that make it a brand? Um, and forever and a day, I think, I think back to that as a big turning point for me on that course. Um, and then I put, I don't know if you guys remember, I put um, just a red stitch up a booklet and a red stitch across the business card and a red stitch. And I physically put it through my sewing machine at home um was, we still got that we still got yeah, that it was, yeah. it was definitely bodged but that that red stitch was a turning point where i, I learned that graphic design was more about especially the branding side of it was more than just a logo it was everything else that encompasses that and makes that logo sing a little bit more um so that that's my first year and then move, moving into my second year i, I told myself that i was going to pick up freelance work as, a, as an about and um, working in the snowboard shop was a perfect place for that. I managed to help rebrand the snowboard shop for them while I was working there. So even though they didn't pay me for that, I was still getting a wage because I told them I'd only do it in hours I was working in the shop. Um, so when it was quiet, I'd nip into the office and sit on my laptop and do a bit of design work. Um, and then I met um, this, I was doing a boot fit for some kid and um, he was like, what do you do? I was like, I'm studying to be a graphic designer. And he was like, oh, I think my dad needs a graphic designer. And then one thing led to the other and this six foot five <laughs> massive bloke came in. And he was like, are you Jamie? I was like, yeah, he was like, Mick. And he was a police officer from the Greater Manchester Police. And I was like, are you all right? And he was like, he's like, yeah, I believe you're a graphic designer. I need some help. Have you got five minutes to sit down? And I was like, okay. Um, I asked my boss and he was like, yeah, go take a seat. So sat on his sofa and he was like, I need some brochures doing so. Um, I, it was the organised police department at um, MM, um, MMU, um, <laughs> Manchester um, Police, and when they released any documents after the after they've all been produced, they needed to make it public, so it didn't have to be anything fancy. But um, I was like, "Yeah, I'll do it," and he gave, he asked me how much, and I think I said something daft like two hundred and fifty quid, and um, he was like, that's, that's not enough. I can't, I can't pay you so little for that. And this was like one of my first paid freelance jobs. And I spoke to you, Alex, I remember in the, in the courtyard at the back of the building, for him <laughs> charge for this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or it'd be X for a front cover and you can have a charge per page or per job and all the rest of it. So I went back and anyway, I got, I ended up getting paid 450 quid for the job, which was massive for me. That's, that's like my monthly salary I was getting working part time. 
Um, so then I made that I made that thing and like some of the images that was going through in the in the carousel before, um, like working for small companies like Seven Coffee, um, where I'd pick up these little jobs, but then I'd always submit it to uni. So instead of it just being freelance and it's put to bed, I'd I'd add that to the, all the projects I was doing on at U, doing at uni as well to to bulk that out and it it paid off because um, I got a pretty decent grade at the end of it and you um, did you, you did seem to bring quite a lot of live work in and as you said that that you know we it was on the show reel we we had it we we still we still have some of the stuff at, at, on on campus um, you know. And when you tell these stories, it seems like just literally you making you're making the most of what's around you. Fully, and I, I, I never say no, which is something this place is teaching me to do. Uh, where I work now, because if anyone asks for help, I'll I help, and and it, it kind of came with that. If anyone anyone suggests it, oh, I've got I've got a bit of design work, whether it's whether it's your mate who's trying to set up a band or or I don't know, like, like the police, it was, um, I'd always just say yes. And then like, I'd never designed a booklet at that point ever in my life. I think the closest I got was the thing we did for Tony Longfellow, which was an eight page little thing that I submitted for my, um, first year grade. And then I was just like, oh, I'll figure it out. And then I'd just spend evenings watching <laughs> YouTube videos and constantly nag you guys for advice. And, um, yeah. Yeah, there, there was a, a your final major project involved quite a lot of collaboration. Um, in fact, not that quite a lot of time when the pitch for for the final major comes from students, um, we do hear students say things like, "I'm go I want to do uh, you know a publication and edit it and design it," and generally the panel. The response from the panel is, well, that's, a, that's a lot to do, you know. Um, are you sure you can't do something you can just design rather than collect as well? When you did, when you, when you pitched that, um, there wasn't a hesitation. Everybody knew that you could do that. Can you just tell us how many people were involved in that project? Including a dog. There were, <laughs> I think actual people directly involved was about eight um, and globally where well you know they weren't just in manchester were they who got involved we had like we we had like three or four companies involved we had um yeah there was a lot i can't I couldn't think off the top of my head but we and that 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 was something oh one second oh, sorry, i was just got a question yeah 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 um, so Mason Trough, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll answer that. I get, it's, it's having the confidence that you know you can pull it off. And what, what I made sure I did was I set the ground rules from the beginning. It's like, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a go. And you, I wasn't going to create a 30 page document straight off the bat. I did spreads. So I did three or four different spreads um, in InDesign, PDF them and then sent it to him for, so he could decide if he wanted to take it further or not. So I didn't fully jump in two feet. There was, there was a, a stage for it. And as long as, as long as you're honest and upfront at the beginning, um, then if it takes you a month to achieve it if, it, if it's not quite as good and they give you time to make the amends and, and, and better it, then that's, it's an amazing experience. Um, so just as long as you're honest from the beginning of your ability and what you what you need to get out of it, then I can't see anyone really having a problem. Hold on to. Let's see. Well, I mean, uh, I think Alex will probably keep an eye on that. See if he comes if he comes back to us on that. Um, but I'm I'm sure he'll he's probably busy typing at the moment. No. Um, so uh, okay. So your uh, your major project I should have said was yeah. uh, your final major project was a. Uh, the first edition of a, a snowboarding magazine, wasn't it? Yeah. Called Bordenary. Um, called Bordenary. Yeah. So yeah. the same thing as I always did. I kind of, I got a client. Um, so this was, this was someone, I've, as you probably gather by now, working in a snowboard shop and my final major being a, being a, a snowboard magazine. I 
one of my major passions, snowboarding. So I've got a lot of contacts within that industry already. I'd, I'd done it for many years. So I knew Aaron, the guy that owns Bordinary, which is now gone. He sold it. Um, and God knows what they're doing with it. But anyway, um, he approached me and he's like, he was just an online blog selling a bit of merch and all the rest of it. And he was like, I'm struggling to get new people to the site. Do you know, can you think of anything that we, um, we can do? And at that current moment, every magazine in the UK was shutting down and going digitally. Um, so I suggested to him that we did the opposite. Um, because it was bold, it was brass. No one else was the mag. Everyone likes tactile things and, um, and the whole industry had gone the opposite way. So why not flip it on its head and do the opposite that everybody else is doing. Um, and it got, it got some really good notice. Um, and I used all my contacts that I had to, to get me involved. Um, we, at the, at the time we was doing it was the first time snowboarding had been involved in the Olympics and the Paralympics. Um, so we used the Paralympic side of it more um, as a hook and the reasons why we'd done it. So the magazine was produced in Braille. Um, we created links to SoundCloud where if you scanned a QR code, so you could read the Braille, scan a QR code, and then sections of the magazine would then be read back to you. So you didn't have to read it. You want to show us? Uh, yeah. You've got that on your, if you sh share your screen, because when you left, uh, when you left study, you, you had a pretty, Good portfolio of work, didn't you? So, tell us when it's on the screen. Yeah, we've got that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so this was this was the look and the whole look and feel of it was it was meant to be super minimalist, really tactile. So we printed it on FSC um, certified paper, unbonded. So it had that real nice feel when as soon as you picked it up. Um, we sent a photographer, a guy called Craig Robinson out to Austria with these guys, a guy's called Booby Trap, who um, is a coaching school. Um, and they take people from all over the UK to places and teaches them, but it's done in a, in a fun kind of, um, fun kind of way. So we sent Craig out there who, who shot them pictures for us. Um, I'll scroll down so you can kind of read a little bit about the top um, as I talk. So the bottom bit, um, the bottom image on the right, I don't know if you can click on this. Let me click on it to open. There you go. Um, I definitely re need to rename them images. <laughs> um, so this is kind of that, that side of it. So everything was, if it was in print, it was then in Braille. Um, luckily for us, we had um, a guy who was just off our, our room um, who was able to translate stuff for Braille for me in the college. Um, so he was a massive help. Um, and then obviously QR code. So we had it in Braille and then we did a bit of testing with him where as you was reading it, what they'd use is their hand. So they'd put the hand onto the Braille and then rest the phone underneath the fingers to find the QR code. Um, so using that and getting the ergonomics right on that um, made, made it work for everyone really. Um, we interviewed um, a, G, um, a great British snowboard athlete who was going out to the Paralympics um, and he did, sorry, um, and he helped massively to kind of showcase that. This is, oh, that is horrible, sorry. I can't believe I didn't do that name. Um, and this is how I kind of displayed it. I wish I had more pictures of it, um, but I had, I made everything from chipboard. I had grass elements in my display. I had it all laid out with iPads and headphones so you can interact with a, with a stand as much as you can. Um, and then I had magazines to give away to certain people who wanted to take them away. Um, that's just a little um, illustration that I did for the guys there. We've got a question from uh, Leonard here, who is, and I think, um, I suspect I know, might know the answer to this. <laughs> um, he's, he's asking, he's saying, uh, considering you had a lot to juggle throughout the duration of your course, <laughs> how did you stay motivated? Did it ever get too much, I suppose? Oh, of course it does. It, it, like sometimes when you work, it gets too much. It's um, it's just making sure that you you know what the end goal is, and um, yeah, things get difficult. And um, and I guess I guess with uni is take everything you can from it. 
every, every time any tutor says, be as creative as you physically can, do it. Like push the boundaries, because that's, that's the time when you, you've got the support. Um, it, gets a, it gets a little bit different. Luckily here, I've got all the creativity freedom that I, that I want um, and the trust from the MD to, that it has in me. But it, it, stay, it, it is staying motivated and remembering that angle, why you're there, why you're doing it. Um, and then you always, you always get through. And if, like, even now I get home and I still do design in the evenings, whether that's, I've got a camper van, whether that's drawing my van and put it on Instagram or something like that. So I'm constantly still playing around on Illustrator in the evenings when I get home. And it's just, I guess you just, you make your job, your passion, and then it doesn't feel like a job. Uh, and if you can do that, then you're winning at life, aren't you? <laughs> I guess, yeah, that's probably a good answer. I, I'm guessing that's got you covered there, Leonard. If not, just pop something in the chat. Um, Jamie, you you put this portfolio of work together, and then um, and just this just before we start talking about your packaging, yeah. uh, you then went out to get a job. So, yeah. what what were the assets? Did you have a CV? Yeah, do you have a website? Did you have a physical portfolio? Did you have a business card? You know, did you did did you join all of the websites you could possibly could? Did you knock on doors? What, what did you need in your bag and where did you take it? Uh, and, and how difficult was that, please? Pretty much everything that you just listed. Um, so I had, had my online portfolio, which I guess you're looking at now, um, which is, um, yeah, it's, it's some of my work. Um, quite a lot of it still from my uni days. Um, that I was proud of, so why not keep it in there? So I had when this... did you start putting that together? I can't remember what was it third year or second year? No, second year. I would have had oh, it. Okay. Because I know we've got some second years in the room. So mm -hmm. I just so, wanted to throw that out there. So yes, there's... sorry, the website, which has still got some of your uni work on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um I would have had a PDF version of it, a obviously the website itself, um my C V, um, which wasn't just a word document it was it was designed up so it was really easy to follow i don't i don't think i have it on here to show um but yeah and it's and it was every, everything and then i applied for a, a million and 10 jobs and i got disheartened like like everyone was um and then <clears throat> i luckily for me i did a work placement in my third year i uh, which i got from my second year end of year show, which was working for a company called Havas Links, which is based in Manchester City Centre, an amazing design agency. They've got about five different agencies under, under the brand Havas Links. And I was working in what, what's called the London department. So I had a great mentor there by a guy called Peter Kinsella, um, who I still keep in touch with over LinkedIn, um, who's now actually um, one of the partners of Havas Links, which is phenomenal for him. Um, and he, he helped me and he, he kind of steered me, made me think a little bit more daring than, than I had done before. I'd done, he sent me this brief, which I'll, I'll get up on screen, which was for Warburton's bread. Um, it's not to everyone's taste, but, um, he sent me the brief and he was like, you need to disrupt the market in the bread industry, which when you think about it, it's, it's a pretty dull subject. Um, so he sent me this, which, which whenever I've shown any design agency, they've always laughed. And it's always been that one project that, that stuck out. And I think you'll all get that at some point, that one, <laughs> that one brief or one project that it's not everyone's cup of tea and it's a little bit offensive to some, but that's why you'll be remembered. Um, so yeah. Take risks. Take risks in your portfolio, push boundaries, yeah? Fully, fully. Um, and the whole concept behind this was, it was aimed more at the gym goers who weren't buying bread and it's thin, thin bread. So you can get more protein in. And that's, that was the whole flipping the thing on the head. Don't do, don't do what's expected of you and do something a bit risque and it, it'll pay off. Sure. Yeah. And, and how, how many interviews did you sit, Jamie? I think about initially I had, I want to say three or four from, and that I'm talking about that's, 20, 30 applications out there to different roles. Um, I got offered two jobs roughly about the same time and um, I turned one down uh, mainly because it wasn't, it wasn't for me. They, um, it was doing 
um, illustrations for gambling games online uh, for a company based in Manchester, and I just I wasn't I wasn't too comfortable with that. Um, and then I got another job working for the place that I worked previous to here called Marlin Digital Design, which is based in Altrincham, just a small agency. Um, <clears throat> we did and went for my interview with them and um, got the job as as, as you gathered. But one thing they said when I when they got the job was they left a little Easter egg or a little hidden thing in the application to see if anyone was thorough enough to read through all the details instead of just multi applying. Um, and it was a little bit of software called ESCO, uh, which is it's after design when it's going to print. It's a it's called art reproduction. Um, it's worth googling if you're not too too clued up on it. Um, and I went online, I couldn't find any information about, on it from the website. So when I was in my interview, I brought it up. They didn't ask it. I was just like, oh, I noticed about this ESCO. You said you didn't need any training for this, but I thought I'd have a look on YouTube and Google, but I couldn't find anything apart from the company's website. There's no tutorials or anything like that. And it was like, oh, I'm so I'm glad you brought that up and never made anything else of it. But then when, I, when they offered the job, it was like, you're the only person that came to the interview who brought up that. And it just told us that you was thorough enough and you, you read into the details and that's why we are offering you the job. So quite, you know, a combination of tenacity, like going for lots of, going for as much as you can, having your portfolio ready, but making sure that when you get to the place you're trying to get to, you've got something in the bag that's special for them. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and, then, and so, sorry, go on, Jamie. Oh, and then, so I got the job and I, I stayed there for six months. It wasn't, um, it wasn't as I planned. And I, I did some amazing work for some massive companies. Um, I signed a non-disclaimer disclaimer agreement with them. So I wasn't allowed to take away any of the designs that I did there, which, which is pretty oh, sad. That, 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 I, is, that is, that's a shame, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. Um, and, but we worked for companies like British Airways and, um, Middleton's who's a food company and that was kind of where I moved from never looking at package design to all of a sudden it's becoming quite quite common in what I'm doing day to day and we obviously did advertising for like companies like um, Tyco or Air Products and big multi-million pound companies doing adverts for print or billboards and all the rest of it um, so it was a massive learning curve and um, the guy that I worked under over there was a massive influence for me. But um, anyway, I left on good terms, as you should always try. Um, and got here, the, the difference between getting my first job and my second job was worlds apart. Um, like, I was really happy with my portfolio, leaving university and then coming. Um, I just needed that experience, I guess. Um, so any chance you get that experience, take it. Um, and yeah, when I came, I got offered, I applied for three jobs and I got all three jobs. Um, and this is, comes back to make sure you're happy with where you pick. I, um, I got offered working for a design agency called Parker's, which is a massive international design agency. I got offered another small agency in Altrincham and then um, this place where I am here, which is the Flavor People. And just when I came here for my interview, this room's pretty cool. We've got glass doors that slide open and we push a kitchen forward and all the rest of it. Everyone in the building was talking. It wasn't a quiet office. And as you've probably gathered, I can talk for England. Um, so <clears throat> I, needed, I needed somewhere where I could talk. And I kept telling them that a big thing for me moving forward was to be able to collaborate more um, and work with people who understand the design process. And um, true to form, I've been here 14 months now and it's... Um, it's amazing. One of the one of the times that we spoke was uh, I can't remember if it was last year, something probably a year 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 ago. I don't know. Uh, you came in and you showed us some work of with a quite a large client that you've been working on. Have you got some of that available? Is that the Yo stuff? Probably, yeah, yeah. Have you got uh, if you could bring up some of that? We're in this and go into my. I'm going to share my LinkedIn um, InDesign folder. 
So um, the way I work now, just to give a little bit of backstory, there's the Flavor People website, which hopefully you've got linked to, which is something that we've recently just done, so it's shiny and new. Um, so please take the time to have a look at that. But what we do is we're at this building's a food manufacturer. So I'm working in house now, which is, which is mega different. I'm the only graphic designer here. I work really closely with um, two girls, Nat and Liv, who um, are brand managers. So they, what the job is to, when we put something out there that it's on, on brand and on tone and um, the way we talk about everything is correct. And so one of our biggest clients is Yo Sushi. Um, and they came to us, um, they, they already had the contract before I started and um, I'm going to cancel my screen just so I can show you something just so you can see. So I have some of the old packaging um, and this is, this is what it looked like. Um, and it was literally, so when I came in, this is, this is how Yo was and it wasn't really performing at retail. Um, so the first um, job I had was to rebrand the whole packaging, um, which was scary in its own right because it was massive like working for brands like yo sushi um so yeah i came in and um this is these are these are my designs and i'll go i'll go through them in a little bit more detail um as, as we scroll through um but what what an amazing brand to to be working on so with this um obviously brand guidelines yo had just done um these brand guidelines and didn't really know how 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 to use them at this stage so it was a, a massive learning curve but Luckily for us, we work really closely with the guys at, um, at Yo. And so whenever we do anything, I can drop something over in an email and get a response instantly, um, which is completely different to working in an agency because things can take weeks. Um, so everything's a lot more fast paced here. Um, can I, sorry, Jamie, I'm just going to interrupt you here. I know you're just, on, you're just about to show this, but just before we hit this work, can I ask you, you've never done any packaging designing before. You'd, you'd worked for what, a year and a half? Something like that? No, no, not even two. Six months. Okay, six months. So you've never done any package, packaging designing before. You've got Yo Sushi on the table. They've got brand guidelines. You've got a whole range to deal with. And I saw the artwork for this job and it, it put me in a cold sweat. Um, and how, you know, how do you, I mean, are you just like, this is great. I love a challenge. You just, you just, you know, give me something to get my teeth into. Or were you like, I, I'm at the edge of my comfort zone. How did you cope with that? Always at the edge of your comfort zone. <laughs> kind of where I live. Um, <clears throat> I, get, I guess when I, when I came here, these guys gave me so much confidence. And like, I know I'm the only designer here, but I'm not the only person. We have Nat and Liv who supported me all the way through it. Check in, copy, like I'm dyslexic. I can't spell for toffee, um, which if you've all been worked with Alex before, you'll understand how bad that can be. Um, so I have Nat and Liv. And then we also have a QA, which is a legality. So there was nothing, apart from the colors, I could have messed up. Um, I, supplying artwork in the wrong file format, that, that was down to me. But I was confident there. I'd done enough print work to kind of have that and I knew by having it go through all these stages before it actually hits the printers um, that that it was going to be it would be fine um, the scariest day was taking the photographs so the little plates um, I took all them photographs with so we hire a, a, what we call a food stylist and a photographer then I go in with a mood board of how I think it should look um, and then we're in, we're in a studio and um, he takes a picture, it appears on my screen. I cut it out, drop it onto a mock pack like this and I fire it to Yo straight away. And Yo have to say yes or no there and then. Um, and we do that for the whole range. Um, that was the scariest moment because I knew I had X amount of time to achieve. There's nine, nine products in the range, I think. And we had a day to do it. Um, but that was, that, that was fun. And that's, that's the first time I had a, had a, a try at art direction. Yeah. yeah. And that was for you. So that was cool. Um, How did you approach this range then that you're about to show us? Um, did you do it as a team? Did you do it individually? <laughs> did you, did you, people come up with concepts or what? How did you talk? How did you, as so a company, how did, I, how did the company approach it? Yeah. So as always, I, I come up, I come up with concepts. I think it was three or four different, different ranges, different colors. Um, matching the big the big thing was matching colors to the flavors um, like 
sweet and sour. We um, so that that was that was a big thing, and then um, obviously we fire that over to to Yo and your final say on everything with this one. Um, as as you saw from the previous, something that was missing on the front was was food pictures, and they um, people eat with their eyes, and in retail you've got half a second to convert someone to to pick up a product over something that they've been buying for years. Um, so the, the bright and the bold was, was really key to something that we needed to do. Um, they also had people, Japanese food is like, everyone's probably had a katsu curry now, but no one's had the Japanese sweet and sour on the old packaging was called Nambanzuke. Okay. Like, I'm not picking up a Nambanzuke and I love drying food. So we, we changed the names and we dullified it without sounding hard. We just made it accessible. And it's a big thing that we try to do within, within the companies, make all food accessible. So everything we do, it's all about making it accessible for everybody. And so the whole names and uh, the look and feel was to make it accessible to everybody. And that was the whole direction of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll flick through and I'll go through. There's some images on here about um, how the process of the print process more than anything. Um, so yeah, these, please are, do. Please these do. are bigger images of, of the range and um, how, how it looks and how it feels. And so all the elements in the background. So that, that orange blob is, um, is salmon. Um, and then obviously chicken breast, sauce and rice. Um, squiggles i don't know what the little blob is at the bottom but that that um peachy squiggle in the background's a prawn because prawn sweet and sour and uh, rice again oh no sesame seeds they are um one thing we did add was where it says coat coat and cook and it that little difference between um between not having what a yakitori is or how to use it you should three steps and then people are hooked they know it's for them or it's not and its name, what it's going to taste like, what to do with it, how long is it going to take me? And that's pretty okay. much Okay, that's interesting. Um, uh, teriyaki, everyone loves teriyaki. Then we've got two males in the range, um, which uh, if you like mayo, I'm not a big mayo fan, but apparently these are amazing. Um, and then this, this is just a little insight. So this doesn't exist yet, um, but it has, it's been approved. So I've been given the green light to show you all. This is going to launch into um, Waitrose and Tesco's, um, I think. Definitely Tesco's. It's either Waitrose or Boobs. I can't remember the other one. Um, so the Yosushi's whole new strategy is going to be becoming the king of katsu. So everything that they're doing is going to be katsu-based from the marketing side of things. Um, we've got a PR stunt going out where we've, we've created the hottest katsu curry ever, and I've tried it, and it is horrendous in a good way. Um, I literally burnt the back of my throat, um, which is nice. And then this is where we get a lot of our stuff printed. Labels Unlimited, they're also called MPH. They're based in Stockport. Um, and whenever whenever I send artwork to these guys before COVID, um, we'd go down and we'd, we'd see it straight on the press and they'd run the first runs off. Um, as you can see, the orange things at the top they're the plates that they wrap around the cylinders that translate. So obviously within most of these printers, you get six colors plus a varnish. So whenever you design anything, you've got CMYK, which you use for the majority of stuff. But then I try to hit stuff with a Pantone. So I've, in this case, I've used the red as a background and the yellow logo as a Pantone, um, just to allow it to pop when it's when it's on shelf. It just gives it a bit more, a bit more brightness. We always proof stuff on the lights using um, a Pantone book just to color match from what I, ha I had initially in my head um, and then how it comes off the rollers. Um, so as you can see on the left, we've got what we, it, it, we call it a GMG. Um, it's as close to Pantone you can get without printing in Pantone, if that makes sense, on a, on a traditional printer, the really amazing printers. Uh, kind of like the one that you've got upstairs, Alex. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've got we've we've got an up we've got that updated actually. We've got oh, an even better one than that now, and we've got 
I'm just trying to remember. Did you did you see the did you see the two um, A3 oversized A3 printers? No. No, we've got two no. two oversized A3 printers. A vinyl cutter, nice. bookmaker now, nice. guillotine. Nice. Uh, I can't I can't remember. And, a bit yeah. of the guillotine. I love the guillotine. Yeah, the guillotine. Yeah, take your arm off. Well, obviously it's got it's safe, but it go through a ream of of uh, paper like butter. I, I would just wanted to chip in. I'm, I'm pleased well, you just o opened up there. I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't know the mix of the the group that we've got here. Um, but I know the first thing I see when I see that is the terrifying copy, all that type at that size, yeah. um, all perfectly formatted. Yeah. That looks like a, you know, that, that's a, it's a job, isn't it? It's, it's, a, it's a cool job. And the beautiful thing with back, and pa back of pack design, because even though it's, um, it has to be, it's got a legal requirement for font size. So right. it, I can't remember what it is, 1.2 mil. So whatever you do, all you, you drop your copy in from like your, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but the ingredients deck on the back, you drop that in, you size that first, then I'd literally just click a box, draw a 1.2 millimeter size box and I just measure it against uh, the X height, and I'd like, there you go, done. And then delete it, and then I just keep that rule and apply that rule for everything else that I design. It's but very neat. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I do, I do like that. I, I, it's, uh, it's an impressive right. bit of work. And I think this is, you brought this artwork to us, didn't you? I did, yeah. Uh, and, and talked about having a talk. Yes. We did, didn't we? Uh, um, and f I think even Al I think Alex might have said, "Oh, you can come and have a talk on this, didn't you? Didn't she? I think." Yeah, which um, is but such a good job, and see, nothing beats that. No. Like, <laughs> if, if, you, if you love design and you love print like I do, nothing beats that when you go and you see, you see it coming off the roller. Um, it's it's a great thing, and these um, these guys they have um, so much so much machinery oh one sec can i just ask the name of the printers uh it's called mp oh there you go sorry uh, mpa <laughs> great guys um they do the the main source of work is pharmaceutical so uh, over the last as you can imagine the last six months three months four months has been mental for them but they're still great guys um mm. so yeah nothing nothing beats that and even better when you walk into tesco's and you see the range and finally we've been waiting for this one's been the katsu curry has been taking the longest um to come through but now finally the full range of my designs are on um retail shelves now so every time i go into tesco's i go and rearrange everything and make it look <laughs> make it look pretty at the front <laughs> uh, uh, just so a matter of the time, has anyone got any questions you want to ask Jamie? Um, you, you don't have to type them, you can vocalise them. Yeah. Um, Jamie, I've got a, a brand new sixth former who's going to be studying media sat next to me. Um, and he's just wondering if you've got any hints and tips. I mean, you have, you have covered quite a lot of stuff. Have you got any hints and tips for somebody, you know, he's 16 starting out in this industry? Just be passionate and ev everything you do, just fully, um, I do, you all right? Wow. Um, um, if, if you honestly believe in it and you know for a while that you've put your heart and soul into it, then it'll be amazing. There's, and no, no one can judge passion. Like I'm looking at that picture behind you and I can't believe you've got that on your wall. <laughs> that, that's another guy who's really passionate about his trade and passion will always show through in the end. Okay. Passion. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, yes, Jamie. Good, good answer. Good answer. Uh, Jamie, did you have uh, some, some, um, Cutting to show us. Cut the guides. Um, yeah, because yeah. uh, I mean, it's a little geek, but yeah, we, li passion. we like a bit of geek. Yeah, so passionate, um, passion. <laughs> so, um, working on packaging, I'm actually working, I've only just started this, so please don't judge too much. Um, working on some boxes. If you've 
if you've seen our um, our website, then this is kind of the next direction. But let me just turn off my artwork. So this, so when whenever I get anything made, and um, I I speak to the printers on almost a daily basis. So this is from a different company called uh, Northern Packaging, uh, which is based up in Scalmsdale, and they do a lot of cardboard stuff. So whenever you go into retail and you see the boxes that hold all the, these things in, then they'll be in a skillet and they've come from this. But at the moment I'm creating, um, I don't know if you can see the little picture, but this, yeah, the box that we're creating to send out to buyers or food specialists with our new products, keeping them informed with what we're doing. So what they do is they send this, which looks crazy um, when you first look at it. Um, and it's a, called a cutter guide. So when the box goes down the machine, it gets printed and then the last roller will have a cutter on it shaped like the outline of that. And it just stamps it and cuts the design out. Um, so when, when you work on this, you, it's the wrong color for it. Let me just change the color of it. Oh, I can't see because that's in the way. I'll just change it to orange. Um, so you you add a three mil bleed as you as you normally would. Um, keep it quite neat as as you should always, um, and it just always hits it. Uh, and then every dotted line is a fold, every solid line's a cut, and then all the rest are, are markers. Um, and that's a cut guide. So ev everything that I work on mostly, if it's going to print, if it's packaging or um, these boxes or anything like that, it'll be based on a cutter guide which will make the perfect form when it's made. I'm, I'm going to butt in there with a really geeky question. Is that right, Jamie? Are we an illustrator? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this, have you drawn around the shape? So what I, what I actually this, do yeah. is I collect. So let me turn the artwork off. Turn the artwork off. So what I do is they never do it, even though I'd love for them to do it. Oh, it's because of layers lock, sorry. Oh, yeah. But see how it's an individual line? Yeah, yeah. So I go around, all the way around, and I collect them. Oh, uh, right. And I just you hide them using command three to hide it. And yeah. then once I've collected it all, I drag it onto a new layer. Oh. Um, and then... Um, Expand the path or something by the middle. No, you've got, because it's a stroke, it won't... Um, you, okay, outline the stroke. Merge it, yeah. and then expand by three mils. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, okay, I'm just, I'm just I, I, I thought you'd done that in InDesign for a minute, and I was thinking, no, 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 one minute, we're not in InDesign, are we? Yeah. We're in Kansas, okay. yeah. Not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, thank you for that, Jamie. So that's... So it looks like a lot of what you're, what you're doing, even though we're in the digital age, is print. Yes. Like, I... I do, I've done a couple of websites here, there and everywhere and a bit of animation for social media and, um, and stuff like that. But I, I do print day in, day out, whether it's brochures, whether it's packaging, boxes, um, leaflets, flyers, um, magazine articles and yeah. So you think it's very much alive? If anyone says it's dead, then they're lying to you. All you have to do is walk into a retail shop and yeah. There's swing tags on all clothing. There's bags that are printed on. The boxes that the product arrived at the store has been printed on. Amazon boxes. Like every food container on planet Earth has got some sort of design on it, which has all been printed. Um, it's bigger than it's bigger than what people think. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think I think it's uh, all all mediums find the place, don't they? And uh, the people get get excited by the new and shiny and forget really that um, how, how much of the the original is is around them what, what how how are flavored people sort of looking to the future have you yeah so anything to this on, on that a good thing on um when when you have a look at the website is we've as a company we are aiming to collaborate more so we're um we want to work with bigger brands and help um, not simplify food in any sort of taste way, 
but it's making it accessible to everybody. So like, like Yo Sushi is on, on board now. Uh, as a company, we own, we own our own brands as well, um, which you can see in all retails, which is kind of the stuff behind me. We're, um, we do an amazing barbecue sauce um, called um, Barbecue Mop with a brand called Meatlust. Um, it is veggie though, so. Hey, I'm, I'm veggie. I'm veggie. Yeah, yeah, I've been since I was eight, so. <laughs> um, even though it's called Meatlust, it's still veggie. And then um, <clears throat> we, work, we work really closely with a lot of retailers. So I've got, I've got some stuff going, um, which we've just developed and I've done the design work for Aldi. Um, I'm currently working on a project that I can't really talk about for um, Sainsbury's, um, which is hopefully going to launch. Um, but yeah, so we work really closely with all retailers and we're in contact with two massive brands at the moment to hopefully collaborate with them to bring the products into a different format to retail. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. So, uh, I mean, it's, we've stayed in touch either through social media or through some emails or, you know, through shows and that sort of stuff. Uh, but seeing, seeing you sat there and, and doing this talk, you know, it looks like you've, uh, you found a, a great place for yourself in the world. Yeah. Yes. yeah got some good stuff out there. And yeah. And, it, and it's great for like Scott, who's the MD of the company. He's, um, managing director um he's he's only my age he's not old um so he he's gives a lot of trust in us to to do our job and it's when you work for a company who, who trusts you to get on with and they trust your judgment then it makes the the, the pressure comes in different formats but there's less pressure mm. um, there's only pressure you put on yourself really to make sure you do a good job indeed indeed yeah and a little well, stat. I like this stat because go on, go on. From this to this, the sales increased by two hundred percent. Whoa! So, whoa! I was, you know, when you when you when you were talking that stat to those that round of applause, that didn't it? When you were talking about that, um, that where where that how well that product was performing with that packaging, I was wondering whether we'd come come back to that. I'd forgotten that, so yeah. thank you. Thank you. I, I'll, send, I'll send some stuff to you guys, and um, once I'm done with any GMGs or anything, I'll, I'll pop them around so you can keep them on record to show people what that sort of thing is, and any cutter guides that I've got, I'll um, drop off and you can have them. That would be fantastic, yeah. That would be fantastic. I think that's thank a you. really interesting point, Jamie, to sort of wrap up with as well, because, you know, like you said, it's fun and and... It, but design isn't about just pretty pictures and nice colors and cool fonts. It's about sales conversions a lot of the time as well. So mm. absolutely. But well, you have to love the cool fonts and, and the, the pretty crazy pictures. colors. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, as you say, it's the love that shines through, isn't it? And, and I think, you know, in, in all good communication, that is the case. The love, the love and the passion shine through. And somewhere behind that, there's someone who um, is dedicated to it and dedicated to the business of it. So I think that's why we, uh, that's why we enjoy things that are, are produced and created with, with so much care. Yep. Thank you very much, Jamie, for uh, spending your time with us. And, and thank you very much to the Flavoured people as well for, um, you know, having us, I feel, like, I feel like we're there, having us visit. Um, having us for lunch. Having us for lunch. Does anybody um, in the chat, I did put out a question if anybody had any uh, uh, questions for closing, if anybody's got any questions for closing, now would be the time. If you want to unmute or type, please do. Uh, Paolo, I, I, or anybody in the team, if anybody's got anything they wanted to say. Uh, no, not more than thank you, Jamie. That was brilliant. Yeah. Great, great to see you enjoying yourself. That's all. Always get there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly do. But you've done the work. Uh, you've done the work. You know, you're there, so... Yeah, we're, well getting, we're getting some thanks in the chat as well. Cheers for listening to my ramble on. No, no, it's uh, it, it, I, the 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 thing I think that shines through here is you know this dedication, passion, this phenomenal eye for detail, but also you know being able to keep an eye on the big picture and what you know what the actual aim is, and in a lot of ways, graphic designers, advertisers, um, 
but I think probably especially graphic designers are, you know, they are, I've, I don't want to say jack of all trades because I think that belittles the fact that decent, you know, really successful graphic designers can turn their hand to anything. And, and I think that's, that's the, the key. But, I, you know, the first project in the first year when you turned up, as you said, that, that, uh, that branding job for, that we did for Ahoy, you know, the materiality of things really was quite evidently part of something that drove you. And seeing you there doing this just makes such perfect sense. So thank, thank you very much um, for sharing that with all of us. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there's any other, um, I think on, in the chat, that's it, in the chat, we have got Jamie's website and we've got the Flavor People's website as well. So please, go. yeah, please the pop Flavor, on. The Flavor People website's brand new. Uh, it's something by like Jamie. Something. Yeah. Um, but I didn't do it by myself and I can no. never really have amazing Nat, one of the brand managers here, did a lot of the copy, the, the words, and we worked really closely with a massive agency in Manchester called Toy Fight, which everyone should look at because it's phenomenal. Uh, which I got to butt in because um, Lee Whitday from Toy Fight, there's two people that, that create Toy Fight and Lee Whitday is uh, one of them. And uh, yeah, he used to be under me in, my, in, in one of my last posts before I went freelance. Uh, we call him Spanish, don't ask why. But um, yeah, he, he's, he's phenomenal. He's worked in all sorts of places like code and stuff. So um, he's, he's a great dude. He's a great dude. Um, yeah, so please have a look at that. Um, and uh, I'm just checking the messages. Sorry, I'm probably Alex. Oh, we've got a question here, Jamie, actually, okay. from Mason uh, Trough. Um, will Flavor people ever bring on designers for some work experience? Probably hope so. Yeah. <laughs> any, help, <laughs> any help would be amazing. No, um, it, it's something that I speak to HR about quite a lot because I've even spoke to both Alex's and Paolo um, about it in the past. It's something that I do want to do. and. Um, it's something we were talking about getting into the summer, but obviously COVID hasn't help, ha helped with that. Um, but there's a hundred percent we'll try and make it happen moving forward. And even if it's just a day a week or even like, yeah, I have high expectations though, guys. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, uh, nice. it, these zoom meetings make people very accessible. Yeah. We have, uh, we've got, we're working with Kin and Carter, um, in the first semester with some alumni uh, on a, um, a project that, that we're shaping up at the moment, which is, which is really exciting. We uh, attended a, a chat by, with Bearded Fellows and just sort of hit them up afterwards and got a couple of live projects off them for some graduating students who, who've been working on those projects over the summer. Uh, so, you know, these, these events, I think, you know, just speaking to the people who are out there, these events, are, I think, are very important. You do want to get what you can out of them. Don't just sit, um, you know, passively if you can. Do speak out and do get the courage to. Uh, so I'm just going to grab the screen and um, just share that. And just say that, you know, if you want to visit our website, that is in the link as well, where you'll see some more of Jamie's work. Uh, like the, on our online show, some of the things that students said. I'm not going to. I'm not going to scroll through this because it's going to go too slowly. But there's a lot of stuff on there that you can have a look at. We've got also our Twitter, which is run by pretty much exclusively by Paolo, which is doing really well, and our Instagram, which uh, we sort of started a, a couple of months ago. We've got the full course outline as well. You can get you can get to the course just by typing in "use and graphics," and you'll get there and. Our website and stuff is is on the the USEN website, um, and I'll just leave you just saying, don't forget to check out Jamie's um, check out Jamie's website if you can. So uh, thank you very much, Jamie. Um, let's see. Uh, obviously, any inquiries can come through the website. And finally, just to say thank you for every to everybody for coming along, and um, just put out to the team is there anything else you we wanted to add no thank you very much jamie no keep in touch yeah. keep us posted yeah. thank you jamie and we didn't do too badly on time either so that's uh, nine past not so bad okay thank you very much